Greetings, everybody. So what we're going to be asked to do in this problem is to find the arc length of the curve where that curve is going to have a parametric form to it of x of t equal to negative sine 5t and y of t having the form negative cosine of 5t. Now we want to find the length of this curve in the interval with t running from 0 to pi over 5. So before we really get into how we would solve this problem, let's do a quick review of how we get our arc length um, formula. So what we want to start out with is we begin by assuming that we've got this curve, and that curve is given parametrically um, as x of t and some function y of t with that t having a starting point at A and an ending point at B. So for whatever this curve happens to actually give us, we may have some form like this, and it's doing this, and so on. Well, we've got our starting point here at gamma of A, and then we've got an ending point over here at gamma of B. Well, if we wanted the arc length for this curve, so to figure out exactly how long that curve is, one thing that we can do is to say, all right, well, I'm going to just partition this curve into points, and then what I'm going to do is just to take some straight line segments. I can find the length of those straight line segments and from the length of those straight line segments, I can get an approximation for what the arc length is going to be, or the true length is going to be for that curve. And so what I would do then to just come in here and say, all right, I'm going to pick these points along the curve, and I'm just going to draw straight line segments between all of my points. And as I kind of do that, I can see really what's happening in that I get an approximation for the shape of this curve. It's not exactly, but I'm going to get something that's going to be pretty close. And so now what I would come in to do is to say, all right, I can actually figure out what this arc length is really going to be. If I take one of these line segments then I can really construct a right triangle from that. And that line segment is going to have a horizontal length of delta x, and it's going to have a vertical length of delta y. And so the length of the line segment is really just going to be, from my Pythagorean theorem, it just looks like the square root of my delta x squared plus my delta y squared. So now in calculus, kind of one of our standard techniques or how we solve problems is we approximate our solution and then we improve the approximation with limits. And so what happens necessarily in that case as we improve our approximation and add more and more points in the limit our delta x is then just going to become our differential dx. So that's kind of our infinitesimal limit for that. And likewise, our delta y, as we add more and more points and they get closer together, that's going to become our, in our differential dy. Now our differentials from calc 1 what we might remember is that our dx is really going to be the derivative of x with respect to t times dt. And likewise, our differential dy is going to be the derivative of y with respect to t times dt. So if we take this and plug it into our approximation for our line segment, what happens is that here, kind of waving hands, we have our dx squared plus our dy squared. Well, using our differentials, 
this is going to be a dx dt times dt squared plus our dy dt times dt quantity squared. So that gives us our dx dt squared dt squared, our dy dt squared times our dt squared. Well, we can factor out our dt squared. So I've got a dx dt squared plus a dy dt squared. And then I factored out my dt squared. Well, I can take that dt squared out from underneath the square root, and so I end up with an expression of the form dx dt squared plus dy dt squared, and that's times my dt. And so what this form actually is then is what I'll end up calling my arc length form d s. So this is my arc length form. Now that's not a terribly precise derivation of where all of this is really coming from, but it kind of gets the main ideas across for what we're doing um, without necessarily dotting all of the I's and crossing all the T's. So you can kind of get the idea of what was the motivation behind this particular formula. Well, now let's take a look at our actual problem. So what we want then is the arc length of this curve. And so given that our x is going to be a minus sine 5t, well, that tells us that our dx dt is just going to be a negative 5 cosine of 5t. And likewise, for our y being a minus cosine 5t, that tells us that our dy dt will then be a 5 sine of 5t. And so when we come back to our arc length differential form, we'll have our ds then just being <coughs> the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared dt. So if we plug in the values for our derivatives, what we find then is that this gives us a 5 cosine of 5t squared plus, or rather a minus 5, and then a 5 sine 5t squared dt. So simplifying this, we have a 25 cosine squared of 5t plus a 25 sine squared of 5t dt, which then using our Pythagorean trig identity is just going to give us the square root of 25 dt, or really just 5 dt, once we get everything simplified. So now, when we want the full arc length, we just integrate our arc length form over the interval for our curve. So our arc length s is just going to be the integral over our curve of our arc length form. So in our particular case, that's going to be the integral between 0 and pi over 5. And then our ds that we simplified from the previous screen was really just going to be 5 dt. And so what happens? We just have a 5t going from 0 to pi over 5. And so we get 5 times pi over 5 or an arc length of pi. So now, is this kind of reasonable in this case? Well, what kind of curve were we actually getting from this 
um, set of parametric equations. So that what we have here is the kind of diagram of a circle and if we, or a semicircle, and if we kind of play the video to see how this thing is mapped out, as t increases from 0 to pi over 5, we start at 0, negative 1, and we kind of trace out the left half of that circle up to um, 0, 1, and so we've got a semicircle of radius 1 is really kind of the image of our curve. So now does our answer of pi kind of make sense? Well, if we kind of stop to think about our formula for the circumference of the circle, well, we've got 2 pi times the radius. And so if we have just a semicircle, well, that's our circumference over 2, which is just going to give us pi times r. In this case, our radius is 1, and so our arc length should really just be pi times 1, or just pi. And so we get an exact answer for what we think we should get in terms of the geometry. So I hope you've enjoyed this um, example, and I will see you guys next time.